Everybody wants to know my thoughts on Rashidi Ellis versus Via fight. Let's talk about it. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I am back with some more boxing. Rashidi Ellis loses to Via in, you know, it's the beginning of the year, so it's hard to say because this is the, really the first boxing week, but fight of the year candidate already. You know, it was a dramatic fight, dramatic conclusion to the fight very good fight i enjoyed it so this is kind of what people expected see listen you got different types of boxing fans the ones that do their homework and the ones that don't the ones that did their homework like myself didn't necessarily know about via but they knew that his record and you know he had power and on paper it was going to be a good fight and that's what eventually happened and the reason i say eventually is because I had Rashidi Ellis dominating the first half of the fight easily. Like, I, I didn't really see Villa winning any of the rounds. He looked very one-dimensional. You know, this Margarito, Antonio Margarito type of Terminator approach. No defense, no swift movements, nothing. If you follow me on Twitter, at Boxing Ego, one thing I did say is to Villa's credit, he looks durable and he's the type of guy where if you don't have the power to hurt him or your conditioning is bad, then he could give you fits because it looks like he, he's strong and durable and he keeps coming forward. And after I tweeted that, that's exactly what happened. And in the later rounds, out of nowhere, he got this second win and came alive in the Ellis fight. So he started landing more and more frequently like after being dominated so that's impressive you got to give him you got to give via a lot of credit because it was a phenomenal comeback even though i didn't think he won the fight it was a phenomenal comeback where he showed signs of life you know you see these fights is this has kind of been happening recently with lomachenko he looks flat for the first six rounds with teofimo then he shows signs of life in the later rounds you look at gennady golovkin in the third canelo fight I was born ready, right? And hell no, guys. Hey, Max. Triple G, he definitely didn't look like vintage Triple G in them early rounds. And it looked nothing like the first two Canelo and Golovkin fights. But then out of nowhere, he starts landing on Canelo and it looks like he's actually trying, right? We've seen this in other past fights with Vladimir Klitschko and Tyson Fury, where it just, the fight on paper, you're like, okay, it's going to be a competitive fight, Tyson Fury and Klitschko. And then Tyson Fury is just boxing him, making it look pretty easy. And then Klitschko doesn't start going for broke until late. That's the type of fight that this was. You know, you had a durable guy. I don't know. I think it was maybe a culmination. You got to look at a Rashidi Ellis, and this is not an excuse. The outcome is the outcome. I can't change that by producing videos. But Rashidi Ellis had the situation with Golden Boy. So he was shelved after beating Alexis Rocha and he was really, nothing was done with his career. And then he came back to PBC and had one fight on an undercard. It was like on the under undercard. And in that fight, he got a second round knockout. It was someone who was definitely overmatched. So realistically speaking, Rashidi Ellis looked sensational given the fact that he basically had no fights in the last several years, right? Because it's hard for me to really say, can, like, when a fight's so short, like Amir Khan versus Phil LaGreco and it ends in 40 seconds, that's not really no rounds. And, and you're getting like, that's like Wilder Hellenius. The fight, that really wasn't a fight, it was just an execution. He got the, he caught the body in, in the first round. And Rashidi Ellis got a second round knockout. There was nothing that made him think in that undercar fight, his first fight with PBC. And this was his second. But this opponent, this challenger, was much different. Even though I think he was one-dimensional and more offensive-minded, it worked for him because he looked very big. He looked like a big welterweight. They said he came from 140, so I don't know how he was even making 140. This fight in boxing reminded me of a UFC fight. And that was the UFC fight recently with Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira. And it's the same kind of tempo of the fight where Alex Pereira, the only difference is he actually stopped Israel Adesanya. And in the last round, 
you had Via almost stop Rashidi Ellis, and he, he was in bad shape. He got dropped, and then he got he looked kind of shocked because he's like, man, what happened? And again, I attribute it to multiple things. I don't think he's had the most activity. And the guy, you got to give credit to his opponent for, for never giving up on himself, things like that. And then the other thing is, I think Rashidi Ellis, his nickname is Speedy. He, he expended a lot of early energy by being showy and being flashy and maybe thinking he would get the stoppage. And I don't know if he truly paced himself good for 12 full rounds, given that he hasn't been the most active fighter, etc. And pacing and timing is a lot in boxing. That, that actually matters. And I think he maybe underestimated this Via dude and thought like, since the early goings was seemingly pretty easy and he hadn't been hurt, he, he wasn't expecting this guy to show this type of heart. But nonetheless, his opponent came with the heart and came with the arsenal and had the second win, was well conditioned, and it made for a great fight. So the two knockdowns made it closer, but I still think Rashidi Ellis won the fight because I had him winning like the first seven, eight rounds easy. You know, it was maybe round nine where Via had a real good round, real strong round, maybe even buzzed Rashidi Ellis. But prior to that, he, he was just losing too many rounds. And I think had he done some better work early, then you could easily say that Via won the fight with the two knockdowns. But people get it twisted. They say, oh, two knockdowns is the end of the world. Juan Manuel Marquez got knocked down three times, three times in the first round with Manny Pacquiao. And he fought on to have a draw in that particular fight. That was the final outcome. So you're not defined by knockdowns. So another example would be Andre Durrell. Andre Durrell fought against James DeGale. Same thing. He was knocked down badly two times to the point where it looked like it might be over early on. And he got back and he worked himself back in the fight. And that fight ended in a draw. So you still got to score based on the scoring system. Not off your emotions because, oh, he got hurt and, you know, the dramatics of it. You still got to score and look at your scorecard. And the fact of the matter is, all emotions aside, Via did not do nearly enough in them early rounds to really make that case for himself. And he showed signs of life late round nine, definitely round 12, stuff like that. So that that made the, the gap, it closed the gap a little but again, I don't think he did enough to win. I think Rashidi Ellis was definitely the rightful winner. And I felt bad for him. You could see it on his face. He looked crushed with the results and things like that. And, you know, that's like a football game or something where you're you're in the lead for three, three quarters and you get to the fourth quarter and then give up a three touchdown lead to the other team and then end up losing on the final field goal. That's just, that's more gut-wrenching. Like me... I guess you could say I'm a poor sport, like in terms of I don't like to lose. So I'd rather just get blown out than be neck and neck and be close or be dominating than just suddenly lose at the end. I don't know. That's just that's a little bit tougher pill to swallow for me. But let me know what you guys think. Hopefully they can get the rematch cracking. That is my breakdown. A lot of you guys wanted to hear it since I wasn't live for the Boxing Eagle watch party until the Boots fight. Let me know what you guys think of the Rashidi Ellis fight. Other topics you want me to cover great nights of fights in up introducing super thanks right here on the official boxing ego youtube super thanks allows you the viewers to show a little bit of extra gratitude which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing underneath all the videos you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it you can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks a brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself but other people on the youtube platform super thanks a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators hopefully you guys enjoy the content super thanks the future is now the hibernation fives by kanichi bear hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, 
gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.